In our first part of the Jurassic Architect series, let's look at path and enclosure shapes. Hello and welcome back to Tricol Gaming with me, Fletcher. And today I'm going to be showing you all how to improve your path and enclosure designs as suggested by folks in the stream on Sunday. Before we get started, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe for more content from all of us at Triclaw Gaming. Right, let's get to discussing shapes. Both the path tool and the fence tool operate with both a short minimum length and a long maximum length. This is vital to learn as it helps create symmetry and perfect shaping. Any variety of simple shape can be made using these minimum and maximum lengths. And if maximum lengths can't fit, then use short lengths and ensure you use even numbers. For example, you can create small squares by using two short lengths of path, create triangles by creating a single main line either from long sections and short, find your middle point and then go straight up, join the sides together and there you go. Remember that your path tool will automatically snap onto the ends of each path section and fence posts and it's this way that you'll be able to count your lengths and ensure that you create symmetry. You'll know that you've hit a snap position because of the noise you get when it happens. Of course, you might want to create more elaborate decorative shapes. To do that, you'll want to create a skeletal structure, a framework. Let's do this with paths first. Create your vertical line and then your horizontal. Remember to ensure that your horizontal line is connected to the exact middle of your vertical line. From here, you can easily create any sort of shapes. My favourite thing to do from here is to create perfect octagons by adding additional 45 degree lines, again by snapping them to the centre of the vertical and horizontal lines and then joining up the edges. And then from here you can create further designs. As a little experiment, I'm going to take this initial octagon and show you how easy it is to create a decorative plaza using this. Ok, so what I'm going to do with this particular octagon is I'm just going to design a plaza inside this. What I'll do as well uh, for you folks watching is I'm going to leave the um, brown horizontal line skeletal bit in here just to make it a bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Now what I want to do is create quite an ornate plaza here and to do that I'm going to need to do a little bit of uh, counting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two and three up and again from the centre point one, two and three down and that gives us an additional line. I'm going to put us uh, two, uh, one minimal section out either side. So that gives us another frame to use in the reference and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same around here. Might want to try and do like a compass point arrangement. So we're going to connect this one to the second of those there and do the same here. So there we go. So we have them connected to the second point on this central route. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete the center points so we have a clear space in the middle and then we've got these two outer edges again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these up uh, on the edges of the octagon here and here there we go we have a perfectly accurate shape there and then of course from here you could do even more if you wanted to so there you go so luckily from the number one slot here the path snaps to be parallel to the one beforehand. So there we are. We have two we have parallel paths. And then we can do the same again. So we can have another set of parallel paths. And I'm not really making this with the intention um, other than to demonstrate to you how you can make a very nice looking um, you know, plaza or path decoration without the need uh, for much messing around. Just all it takes is uh, basically 
some simple framework structures which you can then build in. There you go. So we got uh, two good lines there. Uh, let's actually fill up this middle section. So we can turn this uh, into an area that you might have a sort of guest seating or uh, you might turn that into sort of a fountain plaza or something. You might want to have, I don't know, some fencing that runs sort of along here and then along there just to uh, separate off this area from the rest of the park. You might want to have some trees or something around here. Uh, let's put a few of those in just for effect. There we are. And as you see, it's not difficult to end up with something that looks you know, visually distinctive and interesting. Um, and it doesn't take long at all. Um, let's try another one since this one didn't take me very long. Okay, so here, here we are back at the uh, the empty octagon. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a circle in the middle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, one and two up, and it's 10. And then we're gonna put in the horizontal again. So one and two, and one and two. And then we're gonna make sure that we keep the first two sections of path and then delete the other ones. So we have a perfect cross. And then we're just going to switch to the curve tool and hook up those crosses. Like thus. And then we have a perfect cross within our octagon. And then we're going to connect these up with triangular sections. So we've got a little pokeball going on here and then we can you know we could fill in these sections on the outer edges like that and then what you could even do is you might want to have a space here for dinosaur exhibit there you go and just very crudely putting it in you might want to have a dinosaur exhibit here And then you might want to have some sort of decorative uh, planting in the center. There you go. Again, very simple to do. Once you have a framework that you have built in with your paths, you can then just take it and run with it. It's not difficult to make something look really good. Um, just by building a framework and you can do even really big shapes with this so let's let's take this as an example so let's go one two three and four And actually the path tool will also snap to a dead straight line where you want it to go. If you sort of stretch the path out, if I zoom in, you can actually see it snap to the edge of the, there you go. See, when I just put my arrow over the end that I want it to snap to, it automatically does so. So that can actually help you uh, get the edges. And then obviously from here, we then have the sections within and it's very simple to come up with something that actually looks
Very decorative. And actually, something that looks like you put a lot more time and work into it uh, than you actually did. And then all you need to do from here is just delete the lines you don't want. And then you can create anything from that. Color it however you like, use it however you want. Again, it's not difficult to do. It's just a matter of building the framework that you require around the edge. And you might even want to create, um, you know, other shapes using triangles. So let's see if we can do a hexagon. So let's go four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's our number one and number two. And then we need to add uh, one, two, three, four. Five and six. There we go. One hexagon made from two triangular pieces in the vertical. And then you can just connect them up. There you go. Simple shapes. You can make anything, any shape you like, by creating a framework first. Right, so now we've done that, let's move on. Now, let's discuss fencing and enclosures. Obviously, you can use the same methods with those as you do with paths. However, quite often all I do is create a shape out of path first and then create my enclosure using that path shape as a template. But what else can you do with enclosures and fencing? Something I tend to do with all my carnivore enclosures is to give them double layered fence. This not only gives your parks a realistic edge, since any zoo with dangerous animals has more than one way of keeping them inside, but it also serves a useful purpose in campaign or challenge mode, helping to avoid breakouts during those storms or angry moments. Making double layered fencing is relatively easy, although it is easiest when you're working with well-shaped enclosures such as octagons, squares and circles. Let's do a few enclosures together so that you can see the process. Okay, so uh, with this particular octagon shaped enclosure, we're going to give it a double fencing. Now, when you're doing double fencing, I always try to go with make your biggest, most extreme um, fence, the one that you have on the outside, and make the internal one less extreme. And then all we're going to do is we're going to put in small minimum length pieces on each area. So for this octagon, we're going to have uh, singular sections in the corners and then we are just going to connect them up in the end there we go and then we have some perfect double fencing there I like to keep the uh, ones in the middle uh, where they are because I just think it adds to the design but you could get rid of those and you could add something in between. You could always also bring the double fencing in further and have more of a gap between the outer layer and the inner layer, so you could put trees or what have you in the middle. Like I say, it works best with octagons or squares, things that are perfectly shaped. Let's do uh, let's do another one, but we'll do it in a um, we'll do a square this time. So here is your perfect 
square, again remembering that the path tool automatically snaps to the perfect angles, there we go. Uh, let's put concrete fencing in this time, we're going to go around. And again, up at a 90 degree angle, remember the game snaps to 90 and 45 degrees pretty much. So, there you go. And then we're going to put in our internals, so what we're going to do is put one each corner, like there, and there, and there, and there. Now remember that these ones on the halves, they're actually not full lengths, if I just go up, you can see they're not the same length as a normal half length. So, if we want to have, say, a bracing position of fence halfway down it can't be one that sticks out it needs to be half a one so we want to put in little half sections like that and then we can connect them up like thus and there you have a little half brace and then we'll do the same over here and yes, some people might lament and say, well, you're wasting space in this enclosure and you really need a double fence because, you know, it's not realistic. Um, it's, it's a realism um, thing rather than a gameplay thing. But I think that it actually really does make your enclosures stand out a bit more. Um, and... You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong, I think, with making some of your more dangerous animal enclosures a bit more substantial with double fencing. Um, so again, there's a very simple uh, square one. What about if you do a circular uh, shape? Uh, so let's quickly make a big circle. I say a big one. We'll only make it the same sort of size as our octagons. Circles are quite difficult to make um, bigger than uh, two par maximum path lengths in size. The bigger you make a circle, the more frameworking you have to do with it. Um, the best way I found was to sort of design the first circle. So build the first circle up and then build the second one out from that. But it's, um, it's difficult to do. And often you kind of have to play it by eye. There's our, there's our circle. And uh, again, what we want to do is we're just going to put in a piece of our, uh, fence that goes through the middle. This is a bit more play it by eye, but uh, it will give us the effect that we want and then all we do is stretch out a piece from the middle go around stretch out a piece from the middle obviously you could also do this by eye it would probably be quicker but you'd probably have to give it a good two or three goes to get it looking correct And again, I'm only doing this quite quickly, so there might be a few rough edges, but it's so that you guys can get the general idea of what we're going for here. There's the circle. And then we might want to create that innermost circle. So um, let's grab a different type of fencing again. And what I found is probably the best thing to do is to just snap it to those edge points that we've already made and you'll know which are the posts that demarcate the end of your fence section as opposed to posts that it just puts in because it will snap so as long as you use the bits that are snapping it helps you build up that framework And then again, make sure you have the curve tool on and just connect it up. And you can do this with any curve 
that you have, even you know if you have an irregular shaped uh, enclosure, just create a framework and you can easily snap pieces to it. There you go, circles, octagons, squares with double fencing. It's very simple to achieve. Um, one thing you might want to question is where are you going to put the viewing galleries and such? Perhaps you might want to have a viewing gallery. What I would um, honestly suggest you do, let's take the hexagon, uh, the octagon as an example. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just lengthen one section to make it slightly bigger. And then we're going to remove the double fence section. Uh, we're then going to place in our viewing gallery. There we go. And then all we're going to do is connect everything back up. Now you might want... Now, basically what you need to decide is whether you want the outer fence to connect to the gallery or the inner fence. Let's go for the inner fence on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one section of fence down. We're going to get the inner fence and connect it to the gallery. And then we're going to take the gallery, uh, the outer uh, fence, sorry, and connect it up to that point. That way we have a double fence arrangement all the way around. Of course, you might want to try a slightly different tactic. Let's take uh, this square uh, section. And let's say that you wanted to add in a viewing gallery, but you wanted to maintain the outer wall position. So let's just put that outer wall back in. So say you wanted to keep the outer wall position, but you wanted the inner path to go around the front. Good enough. Again, put in your chosen gallery. There we go. Grab your chosen style of fence. And again, just carefully nudge it up. Go by singular lengths if you have to. And nudge it up. There we go. You might say that that is even... Needs some additional protection. The invisible fence from the bias in DLC really works for this. There we go. Now I have protection in front of my viewing gallery. But you might want to use actually normal fencing for this. To make it look a little bit more substantial. It's really up to you how you design where the viewing systems go in. I mean, for double layer enclosures, you might choose just to put uh, viewing towers over them. Since they're full of dangerous animals, maybe you don't want to have big uh, perspex glass uh, galleries on the side. You might choose to just have a viewing tower or something stuck on the edge instead. It's really up to you how you want to design uh, your structures. And just remember, of course, that once you have uh, a structure, take this octagon, um, then it's not particularly difficult to start expanding it. And you might want to say, well, I want to make this octagon feature the center point of a particular area of the park. So uh, let's expand the fence line, uh, path line around it, like so. I might choose to put in some trees along this, uh, along the empty edges here. So we have a bit of vegetation. And then you might say, wow, I want this area to be more of a guest walkway. So we create a guest walkway. We'll take the center point of that section there. We'll go down. Uh, we'll go out by one, we'll put it up there, we'll put this one out by one, we'll put that up there. There we go, we have a bit of a guest walkway. Let's remove the centre path 
and we'll turn this area in the middle into a plaza for people to sit. There we go. One and two. And then we might want to make some um, amenities. We might want to have guest amenities here. So we'll, I don't know, we'll put them on the sides. There's one. And we'll put another one on the side. There's two. And then we might want to say, well, this gives us a natural point in where we can have a splitting off path. So we can put one over that side and we'll put one over that side. And then we could do the same over here. So it looks symmetrical. There's one and two and one and two. And then you could say, oh, well, I want there to be uh, this gives us a perfect space for, you know, guest toilets. So let's put uh, some bathrooms in here. We'll have it on the opposite way round to the amenity. There we go. And then that gives us more, spe you know, another access. Oh, well, we could have paths coming down here and here. And then we could turn these into rock features with more trees and plants and stuff. You know, there we go. There's more plants and trees and wonderful. And then we might want to say, oh, well, let's have some decorations in here. You know, can you see, you know, not, I've made a little spaceship sort of shaped thing. However, the point is from a simple shape out of some path and some fencing, you very quickly build up uh, a framework for the rest of the park and you could then you know symmetrically copy this over here on this side of the octagon or you might want to use the octagon itself as a focal point for the center of the park and build out from it like a web it's very quick once you sort of get down to the basics of making path shapes and making fence shapes and doing it regularly very quickly helps you build up a very big park. Um, just before I go, let me show you some completed examples of parks I've already done so you can see the shapes and such of where they're being used in my parks and see how they're uh, influencing the rest of the park design. Okay, so here we are at my uh, San Diego Safari Park, which I did a tour around the other day. But you can see already perhaps some aspects of where I've used path shapes. So here, where we have the, the Jurassic Tour, we actually have uh, a circle that was built on the edge of this, uh, at the edge of this um, straight line path here. I built a circle up and around and then just modified the shape uh, around the perimeter to create the, the entrance area and plaza for the Jurassic Tour. Uh, same sort of thing down here. So we've actually got there's the, the line, the original path line coming in on that side down to the, to the center point and up on that side and across. And then I just put a plaza in the middle. Okay, so here are my Oregon Island Park. Um, which I haven't done a tour around yet and really need to get down to. We have, a f you know, again, a few different uh, shapes of the path. We've got this uh, central roundabout here, which was the sort of the beginning of the park in which I used to create the surrounding elements of it. Uh, we have the super square plaza in the middle. We have this curve section that comes out from this uh, circle in a curve. We formed it from two main lines and then we filled in the center points. We have another circular arrangement uh, here which we then added another plaza to here uh, because I was going to put another dinosaur in there but I haven't got round to it yet. Um, where else? Let's have a look down here. The position here where we have uh, sort of where dinosaurs are being stored ready to be uh, given enclosures or whatever we have dead square uh, rectangular shaped positions and we even have double fencing here for the velociraptor pens um, and we've done the same over here with the veterinary area we've got uh, simple squared off shapes 
around here to create natural enclosures for animals that need them. You know, everything is uh, created with these sort of common shapes and common uh, tactics in mind. Let's have a look at one further example. And here the most extreme example of uh, using shapes and symmetry, the Monopoly Park I'm building. Uh, still, obviously, just by the fact that it's built based on a Monopoly board, everything is squared. Um, so we have the, you know, the board spaces themselves, which are uh, perfect rectagons, um, rectagons, rectangles. <laughs> And then obviously the end pieces are perfect squares and then every exhibit as a result is a perfect square. And then we have some additional double fencing here and you can see what I've done here with this particular double fence arrangement. Uh, I have the outermost fence connected to the viewing towers and then the innermost fence just goes uh, over it because they don't need to be protected, they're just the, uh, the viewing tower. Uh, walls. And as you can see with the elements of the park that are not yet finished, um, you know, these are perfect angles and sections. These are uh, these top sections are two minimum path lengths in size. Uh, so I've been able to sort of guide the rest of the building uh, based off that. And you know, the other spaces that are alternates. We've got perfectly symmetrical designs. We've gone up by two minimum lengths there, two minimum lengths there. We've got perfect perfect angles. We went down in the center to create the uh, sort of triangular uh, shape of those other sections. So this was just a simple video showing you how to use the path and fence tools effectively to make better looking areas and enclosures. If you like this first Jurassic Architect video, or found it useful then please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content. Now this is the first episode of Jurassic Architect and I want these videos to be guided by you guys so let me know in the comments what sorts of tutorials and building tip videos you'd like to see in the future. For now I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and goodbye!